my goal has been to create a monster impact in the world. I mean, you know, I, I have a business plan and, you know, the last line is asteroid mining. Ooh. And because I, that's like, that's like the level I dream at. I want to be a part of like moving forward in the world. I want to be, I want to cross the oceans and like discover new lands and affiliate marketing allows me to run like a super lean business while I'm figuring out like how to make a big impact in the world. This is an intro. Intro, intro, intro. Hustle and flow chart with your boy, my boy, Matt Wolf, and Joe Fit. Hey. All right. Yo. It's, uh, it's a good day, my friend. It's a good day. It's I can tell you're exhausted alive. by today. Well, I mean, just behind the scenes again, like always, we always record a bunch of podcasts in one day and then we choose to the end of the day to record our intros. Yeah. Well, so, no, I mean, today I think we're like day. really, really, really great episodes. Um, but we definitely went way longer than normal today. Very long. So, <laughs> all right, let's speed this intro up. And uh, today, though, like, so so this is the first interview that we did of this day. Again, behind the scenes. Very confusing. Which could that. come out before an interview that we did later in the day. We don't know. <laughs> don't confuse him further. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we have uh, John Cristani on the show today. Yeah. And this guy is a, <laughs> I'm just a very impressive uh, entrepreneur, affiliate marketer, but just lifestyle uh, entrepreneur. Yeah. Not sure if he would call himself. I'm pretty dang sure. It's a very low stress the way he sets it up. Yeah. His business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he flies helicopters and uh, what is it? Kiteboarding? Was that the other thing? Kite sailing. He was surfing out, yeah. out in Malibu. So, uh, you know, he's he's got some uh, nice location in, in places to play there. But uh, he's strategically built a life for him to to do that. Yeah. And he does that through affiliate marketing. And yes. that's what we get into today. And you know us, we love affiliate marketing. It's Duh. like our favorite business model. So we actually uh, dive and it's in legit. and yeah, it is legit. <laughs> and we, we nerd out about affiliate marketing strategies. We nerd out about how he grew his YouTube channel. One of the things that's really cool that we get into this is he's actually doing affiliate marketing and selling things online through TV commercials. That's and we're right. like, I don't think I know anybody else who's doing that. Let's See, talk what? about that. <laughs> yeah. So he t he breaks down his strategy yeah. um, about how he's doing this on TV with, um, and he breaks down the whole thing for you. So uh, mm -hmm. if you're even remotely interested, you know, there's a big point in here saying like, hey, Facebook ads. Oh, the more that people are talking about a platform probably means that you're a little too late to the yeah. platform. You're probably going to pay way too much and there's way too much competition, but uh, start exploring some new stuff. So maybe yeah. TV is one of those for you. Yeah. And we also talked about whether or not affiliate marketing was a legitimate business model. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll let you decide after listening to this episode. And one last thing is at the end, uh, you know, sometimes we'll ask about book recommendations. Well, he, yeah, he came, he, <laughs> came, he brought the A game with the book recommendations. He literally was like, hold please. And we, <laughs> we did some background, you know, elevator music. And then uh, basically, you grabbed a stack of books. A lot of them were non or were fiction books. Mm -hmm. Like, and you'll hear why he's reading all these fiction books and some sci-fi, but also just like just general things that lets him see into the future, basically. Yeah. And ironically, these fiction books actually have affiliate marketing baked into them yeah. in some fashion. So. Uh, I love the way that he breaks down the affiliate marketing model and how it's actually something that some of the biggest businesses are operating from, but you just might not, might not know it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so the books are really cool. The whole thing's cool. John's an awesome guy. Yeah. Um, Look oh, him up and, on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Check him out on YouTube. So just go to, go to YouTube, search up John Cristani. That's C-R-E-S-T-A-N-I, John Cristani. He's got a killer YouTube channel where we, we actually talk about it a little bit where he's just really teaching outside the box affiliate mm -hmm. strategies, things like how to be an affiliate marketer on Yelp, how to be an affiliate marketer on Quora, like really like, just oh. kind of <laughs> random stuff, but like they're legit videos. They're cool videos. So uh, we definitely recommend checking out his YouTube channel. Tell him we sent you. Tell him. Yeah, that would be actually Why great. Why not, right? Yeah. Come mention on, it in man. one of the comments. Like I heard you on Hustle and Flowchart. That Damn would right. be... That would make our day if you make did that. Make our day. And of course, we're taking notes on this one. We're always taking notes, man. So yeah. Sue is taking notes and Sue's the bomb. Da bomb. So uh, Sue's our fabulous note taker, always taking notes. So you don't have to. You can just be in the moment yeah. and soak it in. So go to hustleandflowchart.com slash comp, C-O-M-P. That's hustleandflowchart.com slash comp. You have two weeks to get these notes for this episode. They go away in two weeks. So be quick, hustleandflowchart.com slash comp. Get the notes. and. Now it's time for Mr. Johnny Boy. Let's go. We're getting faster at this. 
John, how you doing, my man? Dude, doing pretty rad. Yeah. How about you guys? Freaking awesome. It's Monday. This is a, it's a rare recording day for us. <laughs> yeah. We actually never record on Mondays and we woke up today and we're kind of like, shit, Monday's not the best day to record podcasts <laughs> on because we're not like in the flow of the week yet. We're kind of like, this is our first thing we did of the morning. But I think, I know. I, I think the pre-conversation we had before we hit record sort of got us lit up. So oh, I yeah. think we're, we're, we, we're in the right headspace and energized yeah, I now. woke up like five, I woke up like five to 10 minutes ago, man. I just like threw down, did some push-ups. I'm like, oh, I got to put on some clothes. Like, and we're on video on too. They might, they might actually show this on uh, video. So... <laughs> <laughs> we just might <laughs> if you're cool yeah. with it yeah man and uh so you're up in malibu yeah we're just riffing back and yeah. forth like us just yeah it's nice to have a little land away from a bunch of people and you're in the middle of what rebuilding a home i mean you went through yeah. a gnarly fire a year and a half ago you said so it's like oh that's a whole bag of worms i bet but oh yeah yeah it was definitely it was definitely pretty crazy you know i i woke up and the fire was right like a hundred yards away uh from my bedroom so i woke up and i was like oh my god <laughs> like what the heck and uh thankfully my wife was staying at her parents and kids were staying at uh her parents you know the grandparents house but i was like what do i do and i was like okay and and it was like that classic moment where you think to yourself okay i have like three things i can get like Ugh. what do i grab it's like you have it's like you have like 60 seconds to exit your house what do you get and uh you know i got my keys <laughs> my wallet my phone and then after that i was like uh okay what do i get and it was just the cats and the hedgehog and like hedgehog that. <laughs> that's cool yeah, yeah. he should the be hedgehog, fast enough I to run out though cool. right no, i'm just kidding. i, I put the cats in my truck and then i was like shoot i forgot the hedgehog <laughs> because he has this big case and i was like a do i leave the hedgehog like technically they're illegal in california <laughs> And, or no, and then and my wife hates it and then i was like no i can't give her the satisfaction of leaving the hedgehog so i just ran back in i grabbed the hedgehog and uh yeah that was it i didn't get anything else thank you want us to cut this from the recording like, <laughs> just uh, oh, for legal oh. purposes <laughs> <laughs> we don't know where john i, I don't think it's the, okay i don't we'll, think the property proper authorities are tuning in no, so i wouldn't yeah, worry too they much were, they can <laughs> shove it no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh man i mean uh, i can only imagine i mean what a year and a half ago because we've seen some videos on youtube you have all these like little clips and all that stuff and i think that's what yeah. we saw we're like holy crap like uh people get a chance go check out that video because it's like well done and it shows you like at your old house um oh yeah i forget exactly what you were saying in there but it's yeah, basically yeah, this yeah. story the fire, the, we we did some drone footage yeah. of the uh of the like destruction afterwards those fires come fast you man. Didn't do it, a, Matt. Yeah, yeah one of my old neighborhoods my house luckily didn't burn down but the neighbor's house directly next door did and we woke up at uh, like 3 a.m. or something and there was just like the there was a, a hill behind our house and the fire was just kind of coming down the hill and yeah. they uh and helicopters were flying over telling us to evacuate so like i loaded a whole bunch of shit into my truck but i actually never left mm. i actually was out in the backyard wow. with the garden hose just like spraying <laughs> yeah don't be that guy. yeah there's one <laughs> old dude on our block so the only house that survived on the block uh because i said all the houses but there's one that survived and the one that survived was this like 80 year old dude <laughs> who had his own fire hose fire hydrant hookup or he had his own fire hose to hook up and he like the fire hose was like 100 yard i mean they're heavy these oh, things yeah. like he was oh, yeah. he showed it to me in his garage it's they're super heavy yep. and uh just like the nozzle it's like me just pure metal so he walked down to like the end of the block hooked it in like and I guess he just watered all around his house in the middle of the night and just created a moat. And uh, the, that dude had been like preparing like a diameter. Around, I mean, the dude was gnarly and his house was the only one that saved because he sprayed a moat. Oh, <laughs> like, he probably lived there for close to 80 years. So he knew what the hell to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's been there for over 50 years. There so he's go. like, yeah. it's like, this ain't my first rodeo. You know? <laughs> 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 Got to yeah. learn from that guy, man. Yeah. Well, other than fires, I mean, you're doing some other cool shit. I mean, you, we, uh, you know, we're nerding out. I think, do you guys know each other? Or, 
I'm um, trying to remember if uh, maybe not. Yeah, I you, uh, think I think we've interacted a couple times, maybe on yeah. some Facebook messages or something, or yeah. on Facebook uh, comments or something like that. But um, no, I mean we've never really connected. Other than that, I don't think. Well, everything's affiliate marketing with you, I know, and and uh, even the sign or <laughs> the painting you have behind you <laughs> 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 proves yeah. affiliate marketing license to print money. Saint Henry on Instagram. This guy's <laughs> rad. So that's awesome. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how I actually came across your name originally. I think it was probably on YouTube. I probably stumbled across some of your YouTube videos because we're big into affiliate marketing too. Ninety percent of our income, eighty percent of our income comes from affiliate mm-hmm. marketing these days. Oh, nice. So I mean, like that's like. That's the rabbit holes I tend to go down. So I'm pretty sure that's probably how I discovered yeah. you <laughs> or that, that's no how I, I came across your stuff was on YouTube somewhere. But um, I mean, you've got some like outside the box affiliate strategies. I mean, you're on there talking about like how to be how to do affiliate marketing on Yelp and how to do affiliate <laughs> yeah. marketing on uh, Quora and, you know, just all sorts of platforms that nobody else is talking about. And yeah. I, I just think that's kind of fascinating that you're you're sort of finding ways to turn anything into affiliate platforms. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, on one hand, people don't know how versatile it is. I get all these questions on YouTube. They're like, how do I, you know, get traffic for free? I'm like, you can get like any, any, any way, like any way that you can communicate with another person through the internet is a way that you can market products. And I, for me, I just find marketing super fun and i love doing it and i love you know i love and it it's it's just so so for me you know i got all these questions which were like okay well how can i you know get traffic for free and i'm like there's a million ways like i and i just continually get that question like even to this day so uh it was a combination of that and also seeing that whenever i showed like <clears throat> instead of talking theory whenever i showed like soup to nuts i'm like okay, here's, you know, here's a traffic source, here's an affiliate program, and here's how to do it that pe- my audience on YouTube just, just loved it. Mm-hmm. You know, they went, cr- they went nuts over it. So I was like, okay, how ca-? you know, I already did like, Facebook, Instagram, Google, Twitter, YouTube, I'm like, what else do I do? All so the I obvious just, ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, guys, I showed you everything. And then I was like, okay, like, let me think outside the box. Okay, like, how how they want more, how do I give them more? So I was just like Quora, Yelp, like Google Docs. Like I just I just kept going. TV yeah. ads. No, not yet. TV ads. <laughs> yeah. Let's circle around on, on that one. Well, and then the other thing that I know Matt and I were nerding out about and because we love affiliate marketing is you could freaking create a badass lifestyle business out of it. And here you are oh. Like what you're what kite surfing all the time. You said helicopter flying and it's just what not working too much and you don't have any employees. Right. So it's just, <laughs> well, not, not, I don't know about the not working so much. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. yeah I, I do a lot of fun stuff, but I, I am a, I'm an insane, uh, I'm an insane worker. Like my work ethic is, is off the chart um, in terms of, and, and I, I value running, you know, a lean, a really lean business. Uh, I mean, or sorry, not I value. I'd say affiliate marketing allows you to run such a lean business um, because it's just you know you don't have to worry about all the different aspects of you know product fulfillment, warehousing, shipping times, like you know delays between like okay, this is supposed to arrive this time and my cash flow like mm-hmm. like a traditional business, you know, like almost all of them have to play like you know cash flow games where they're mm-hmm. like okay, we pay these people and then the result, you know, it's so um no, but but my I'd say my goal has actually never been to run a lean business. My goal mm-hmm. has been to create a monster impact in the world. I mean, you know, I, I have a business plan and, you know, the last line is asteroid mining. Ooh. And because I, that's like, that's like the level I dream at. I want to be a part of like moving forward in the world. I want to be, I want to cross the oceans and like discover new lands and affiliate marketing allows me to run like a super lean business while I'm figuring out like how to make a big impact in the world. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it, it gives you that flexibility and allows you to make a lot of money while doing it, you know? So I want to, I'm curious about the impact thing, but take us back to what got you here too. And, and because I, I can imagine it's not always been exactly like this when starting out. Right. 
<laughs> no, no, no. It start it started off. I was just like, I, I, I want money. Like, <laughs> like how, how do I make a lot of money? Well, what were you um, doing before you got into affiliate marketing? Uh, so before I was doing affiliate marketing, um, I was I was working in an ad agency for two years and uh, also running like all these different like little side businesses. You know, I ran like an online tutoring company. I ran a um, <clears throat> I, uh, you know, I, I had a, like an eBay, like business where I was reselling stuff. I had a software business, um, around the tutoring space. So mm -hmm. I, I ran all these little businesses for mm -hmm. years and, uh, you know, just, you know, I'd, I'd make some money. I'd get my PayPal account shut down. I'd like, <laughs> you know, I'd make some money. Then I'd like, you know, like get kicked out of school and then, and then, you know, I, I worked in an ad agency because I realized that I really liked marketing um, and I like making money. And if I worked in a marketing agency, I might, I might be able to learn more of that stuff there. And sure enough, you know, it, I was able, you know, when I, when I got, got the job at this like local SEO shop, um, you know, they had me cold calling for a little bit, but what I would do is I'd get in real early and then you know, I would hang around the pay-per-click guys because mm -hmm. the pay-per-click guys, that's, that's the, I, I'd been doing some pay-per-click for my like side businesses during college, but I never really understood it. And once I saw the power, um, you know, and I just started getting good at it and uh, eventually moved over to the pay-per-click department. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, that then, ever, you know, then my skills just accelerated. Because everybody else was going treating it like a job, and I was treating it like I was getting to like learn and get paid to learn. Yeah, that's the best. You know, on using other people's money every single day. So I like showed up to work. I'm like, cool. <laughs> like, like what? Much what to client? Lose. Account, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, what client accounts do I get to work on today? Like, what? Like objection? You know, like how? Do, yeah. So, so it. So that really accelerated my success. So after two years of working in a uh, ad agency doing pay per click, um, I just I just became really I became really good at it. And that I'd say that's my you know I know you guys all talk about like focusing on your your part of genius. Mm -hmm. um, you know that became my that became my thing. Is mm -hmm. I'm really good at at getting ads, buying ads, and making ROI. And I just started doing that for myself as an affiliate, and you know the rest is history. Very cool. Do you is there like a specific type of affiliate product you promote, or any specific niche, or are you just kind of like let's let's just try over here, let's try over here, let's you know what's your philosophy behind it? Are there like how do you pick the products you promote? I think it's always good to have a mixture of like like high ticket stuff, like continuity stuff, um, and just like. Like, I, I don't believe in recommending any product if you're not getting paid for it. Like, you know, like I go to work, I, you know, and, you know, I'm abandoning time with that I could be spending with my wife or my children. Mm -hmm. So I, you know what, I, I, my family comes first. So, you know, if I'm going to be spending my time marketing and recommending stuff, it's got to be for money, you mm -hmm. know, and if, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, you know, that's, that's the fact. So I re anything, you know, everything I recommend on my YouTube and in my courses, like the affiliate networks I recommend, I get a kickback from the, you know, the web page tools I recommend, you know, the email service provider, the hosting company, the web page builder, click funnels, you know, ever anything that I ever recommend, you know, I always make sure I get a kickback from and all these, you know, so I have a few like main sources of you know, my affiliate marketing income, but everything else, there's like a long tail there. So I have all these mm. affiliate programs and it all adds up at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, just, yeah. yeah so, you know, well, I'm curious because, yeah, like we run into this issue is, uh, when you promote, cause we, I don't know how many we promote, we have like 10 core offers that we always promote, but then we have all these like random other ones, you know, that just kind of inherently get thrown into the mix. How do you track all that stuff and making sure you're getting paid and, you know, all that. Yeah. So, so right. You know, I, I, if for people who don't know, I teach people how to make money online, you know, like how to work at home mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, then do affiliate marketing. And 
so there, I have a few major sources of income. So it's like, I have a training course at this point, and that's a lead in for a lot of other stuff. So really the training course or in the, um, is, you know, I'd say like, I have to be profitable if I'm buying ads for my training course, which is a thousand bucks. Um, I have to be profitable on a cash over cash basis on that, or I have to be at least break even. Mm -hmm. And then all of the other sources, um, you know, I generally assume that, you know, whatever somebody buys on the front end, you can probably make about double that, you know, with other services. So like after I teach people how to start an online business, you know, people need website hosting, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. and that pays 150 bucks per commission. And then people need a web page builder like click funnels. And then people need, you know, people might want to go to a seminar or have like one on one mentorship. That's, you know, that's another thing. So all these things add up to, you know, I've seen about double. So if I'm just mm -hmm. prof, if I'm break even or profitable on the initial product sale, I just, I basically like, that's just the one number I look at it. Then everything mm -hmm. else is mm -hmm. gravy, but I have a loose idea and there's predictability around that. So I just make it really easy for myself because if I had like, if I had to like input every like 10 <laughs> affiliate programs in a spreadsheet each day, I mean, I'd go crazy. You know? <laughs> that's like, literally I, what I, I do I, right now for our affiliates. So. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I would go crazy yeah. too. That's kind of why I asked that. <laughs> yeah, no, I have like a, uh, I have a, a, a bookmarks folder on my computer, right? And it's like all of the affiliate backends. And yeah. once a day, I'll go through and I'll open every single one in a new tab and add <laughs> the number to a spreadsheet. So I know which affiliate programs are working, how much like we make on a daily basis across all. It's it's a yeah. nightmare, but it keeps us on track. <laughs> well, so I'll ask you, uh, yeah. is, is, is he going crazy? He's not, actually. That's a sweet <laughs> okay. place. Man. That's I'm why he's doing nerd, it. Right? I nerd out on that stuff. <laughs> yeah. But we are trying to make it easy and not manual. That's, uh, that's the key because... Because I know with affiliate, you know, you just have all these logins all over the web, you know, and if you're yeah. a lot of folks, you, know, you could be sitting on a chunk of change over there and with one account, maybe because you didn't input your PayPal email or to send yeah. in your W9 or whatever it might be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To yeah. Yeah. All that's Yeah. I do. There's so many little points. <laughs> to and I have, I have two, uh, I outsource a lot of dev work. I've been, yeah. you know, I have two dev agencies. And, um, at this point, I mean, there's so you're right. There's so many things. It's so unpredictable and the things that can break, you know, it's like mm -hmm. you forgot to put the credit card down on your SSL certificate or like, you know, you, you know, Dumb like little uh, things can like totally. Yeah. <laughs> we lost our that. entire first blog that used to like the very first entry that we ever did into online marketing. We lost it because we forgot to renew the domain name. That's right. That's right. <laughs> There's Sucks. yeah, so there's all these little <laughs> things they add up. So I've yeah, it, 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 so yeah, it it it's a crazy, but uh yeah, I always I generally like to keep things simple with you know one product as the you know the main product I'm marketing, and if I'm if I'm break even or profitable on that, then you know the other stuff I sell is is kind of gravy because the fact yeah. of the matter is people need um. You know, it, it, you know, every any any problem that you're helping solve, you know, because I generally speaking, affiliate marketers are solving a problem. There's a lot of things around that, like weight loss. It doesn't just stop with like getting a, 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 a anti, you know, eating pill. It's mm. like, you know, people will need, you know, they're going to need new clothes. They're going to need to join a gym. They might need to like meal prep programs like Nutrisystem. You know, there's all. You know, there's a lot of stuff in each niche. So do you, what's your model look like? Is it like you have an entry point where you're getting them on a list or you're trying to, you know, start the journey and then you essentially like build the journey after that through promotions and giving them everything else they need? Yeah, exactly. So my journey starts, um, <clears throat> nowadays, my journey starts with uh, my, my, uh, you know, well, now we have two front end programs, but it either starts with my book or with um, which is 40 bucks or my my web, you know, my thousand dollar training course. Most people find out about me because, you know, they register for a web, my webinar, which tells people about affiliate marketing and also my thousand dollar training course. And, um, you know, if people buy my thousand dollar training course, first off, I, by the way, we updated it. We used people on Tony Robbins team to redo to figure out the curriculum structure. They're like um, the best in the business at the architecting of 
Content. You guys are down in San Diego. I'm sure you guys know a lot of Tony people. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, um, so, you know, the $1,000 course, so obviously, I'm trying to make money on that. But then, like, for instance, if they don't buy my $1,000 course, I still have their email address and their phone number. So I think maybe they're interested in, like, maybe drop shipping, or maybe it's like cryptocurrency, or maybe it's like, you know, selling on Amazon, and maybe it's consulting, maybe it's starting a local marketing agency. So, you know, every week I kind of showcase another, and I've actually like, you know, we like work with the sequencing, like, are they mm. more interested in starting like a drop shipping business or consulting business like my market? So we'll like, kind of like move around, like which promotion we do first. And um, we just show them like every training product in, uh, in the different on online entrepreneurship spaces. Um, so that's an additional source of income, right? And that, that makes, a, you know, that makes a good amount of money. Um, and then, you know, so we just, and, and then if, when people purchase my training program, you know, I obviously I'm an affiliate for the affiliate networks, mm -hmm. you know, I'm an affiliate for, um, web page building tools like click funnels, you know, mm -hmm. they pay me a lot of money. Uh, I'm an affiliate for hosting companies. Um, so you know, it all, I'm a, an affiliate for seminar companies like Tony Robbins. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's kind of the way I think about it is, um, and I also think it's just servicing the audience the best because it mm -hmm. doesn't just stop with like, you know, you took a, a training course, like the world's right. better. Like maybe there, maybe you have to make improvements in your mindset. Maybe you have like trauma you haven't dealt with before. Maybe you need like, you know, a web page built. So mm -hmm. it just goes on. And I, I think the goal is always to add, to service the audience and add the most value uh, to your audience, regardless of whether you personally offer um, uh, a solution to that. Yeah, I think it's interesting with affiliate marketing, and this is something that on our podcast, we've tried to do a lot to sort of get over this hurdle in people's other people's minds, is that I feel like with affiliate marketing, there's a little bit of a stigma. It's almost sort of divisive. Some people don't see it as a legitimate business. And and I think with Joe and I, we actually struggle with that for a few years of like, okay, most yeah. of our money's mm -hmm. coming from affiliate marketing. And we'd hear people say, that's not a real business. Mm -hmm. You need to, you know, you need this other stuff if you're going to be a real business. And um, it was something we struggled with while our affiliate marketing revenue is growing. We're like, we're making <laughs> yeah. more and more money month over month, but people are telling us this isn't a legitimate business. Um, so, but it was like a mental barrier that we had to get over with feeling like we are offering a valuable service that is needed, that, that helps businesses, that helps consumers, it helps everybody along the line. But there was like that weird mental thing we had going on of feeling illegitimate. And I'm, I'm curious about your thoughts on that. Dude, I, I'm 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 interested on like how, <laughs> how your thoughts on that too. Um, yeah. No, I to I totally know what you're saying because it it feels and, and Tony Robbins kind of talks about. Sorry if I go on tons of tangents. But Tony <laughs> Robbins fine. talks about this is kind of like where you feel like uh, it's like imposter syndrome, yep. right? Like, and, and once you go above your comfort level, um, it starts feeling funny. And I I remember when I was like you know in my early twenties and. You know, my income went from like, you know, I was making 6,000 a month at my job. Um, and then, you know, it zoomed up to like $50,000 a month, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like 23 or 24. And it's almost like, you're like, this, some, this isn't right. Like, I shouldn't be making this much money. <laughs> it feels like you um, broke the system or something. You're like, whoa, yeah, oh, we found a loophole. I, or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then uh, you know, I, I got, you know, like it's imposter syndrome. And I, it, it definitely felt weird for a little bit. Um, I, you know, I, I, I started making over, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month um, when I was selling weight loss products like Garcinia Cambogia. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I know a lot of people in the affiliate marketing industry have this like self hate, and I definitely had that too. What and, do you mean by that? Um, like, like literally, like, like, depression. like I, you know, like uh, I'm making a lot of money, but like, is what I'm doing wrong? And like mm -hmm. everybody, like all these other affiliates are like, you know, they almost like they're like we're like making out like criminals. But it's right. I was like, am I doing something bad or? A am I not like, I don't know, because I'm making so much money, like, I must be doing something bad. And I thought about it for a while. And, um, but eventually, I came to the conclusion that a lot of, you know, Gar Garcinia Cambogia had 
some sort of bad reputation, but actually it, I, I looked into all these products myself and I was like, okay, I'm actually going to like buy and like look mm -hmm. into these products and like use them and like actually see what I'm selling because I had no clue. Um, but I could sell them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I tried out the weight loss products and I looked into how they worked and like the chemicals and all that stuff. And Garcinia Cambogia is an appetite suppressant and what it was commonly paired with what I was set because I was selling like I'd sell Garcinia Cambogia, then it would immediately upsell to a, uh, to kind of like a liver flushing thing. Mm -hmm. So it suppresses your appetite and it clean cleanses, you know, cleanses your intestines out. It makes you like you, you poop out. Like <laughs> it, you've never detox. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a detox thing. And I, I've never, I'd never done a detox and I was like, Oh my gosh, this <laughs> detox stuff is gnarly. Like yeah. I didn't realize I had all this stuff locked <laughs> in my intestines. And when I actually did that, I realized that I was, I was the alternative to all of the McDonald's advertising <laughs> and the Burger King advertising. And that what I was doing is actually really like the problem was there for a reason. And I realized it's because the fast food companies advertise everywhere and people need to lose weight. Yeah. And this is a solution. While some people may not think it's the proper solution, you know, you know, like, people would say, you don't need pills. You need like exercise and, you know, a uh, healthy diet, you know, but <laughs> so, a lot of people don't, you know, it, that's very difficult for them to find the time to do, or that's, it's not their lifestyle. Or they discipline go, they or go, whatever it is. Yeah. They go barbecue, you know, they eat a rack of rit, you know, they're not going to go on the freaking you know, <laughs> vegetable diet. So, so I realized that a lot of these industries have been pushed to the margins. You know, a lot of the industries that are in affiliate marketing have been pushed to the margins, but they are, they have a genuine way of helping people out. And, um, I realized what I was doing was not bad. And, uh, I was just helping kind of marginalized industries for whatever political reasons get you know get their message out there and help people and yeah. uh that was a huge change for me yeah i think i think one of the things that that sort of helped us was um you know we were talking to one of our buddies josh bartlett he was telling us uh he was comparing us to like the madison avenue ad men right, right. like the like yeah. the ogilvy's of the world saying look ogilvy he didn't make the products he sold and he wasn't the consumer of the products he was a guy yeah. that just helped make them sell better yep. he's like you guys are just doing that do you consider Ogilvy's, uh, you know, the, the Madison Avenue ad men? Do you consider them a legit business? Of course you do. How are you yeah. guys any different? Yeah. And that was sort of one of the reframings that I think really helped us a lot. And it was a, a, another piece was it was like that. And then we're like, OK, let's make our, you know, our mindset was just like, OK, it's not legitimate. So we built a structure around it that felt more legitimate, I guess. Like we kind of connected all the pieces like mm. from the podcast to our email list to our Facebook group and all these other buckets of audiences. We just kind of created this like, I don't know, this ecosystem that we can then be a legitimate in our mind. You know, like we could show like, okay, where well, we're helping a shit ton of people by pairing them yeah. up with what they need at the right point. And uh, yeah, paired up with that, we're like, oh, okay. And ever since then, revenue has gone more, <laughs> work has gone down for us. So it's like, it's weird how these mental blocks can really, can really fuck you up, <laughs> you know, and off yeah. really. Yeah. But. Uh, and you know, another, another uh, way to make that maybe help the audience understand this is, you know, nerd wallet, you mm -hmm. know, is a good example of this. You know, they just, they, they review what the best credit cards are and that, you know, tra uh, Expedia.com, mm -hmm. um, Orbitz, you know, yep. cheap, any, any flight booking thing, you know, it Priceline, those are all affiliate companies. Yep. And, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is most companies don't even, you know, sell stuff anymore. Like Uber, mm -hmm. Uber, does, <laughs> Uber is just, it's basically like their own affiliate network for like people who like have a car and free time <laughs> yep. and want money. And people who like don't want to drive and have money. And it's just like, it's, it's all arbitrage. Uber yep. doesn't own cars, you know, hotels.com, another hundred million dollar plus affiliate company mm -hmm. doesn't own any hotels, but this it's the biggest hotel company. So it's, yeah. you know, the internet revolution, the connections that, you know, the internet can create are still just, it's in its infancy still. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
we yeah. just need to connect everything and that's that's what we're doing it's yeah it's, it's super cool yeah, yeah and the way you described it was actually just very helpful because yeah when you start looking at the business models a lot of those companies you're just like yeah they just built a container the system and they have these partnerships with like hotels.com it's just with a bunch of hotels or groups yeah. of hotels and they're mm-hmm. just they have the eyeballs hotels.com does solving that need and they're just pairing it up with a solution aggregating them in a simple way to f- and that's all you're doing. You're building a journey, a nice resource, and boom, affiliate marketing. Like that is a oh. money business right there. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. So, with you, uh, how, like, I know you're all over YouTube like crazy, and this is one of the rabbit holes that we wanted to go down because yeah. I feel like, is that, is that your prominent channel, like YouTube or Discovery Channel at least? Uh, YouTube is, I'd say, so, y- yes, but in a very roundabout way. Um, so, Oh, you guys just, oh, you guys froze for a second. Um, so the way YouTube works for me is essentially I'm teaching people to be affiliate, mar- uh, to be affiliate marketers and I'm training them how to be or practice affiliate marketing or do it using promoting my products. Mm-hmm. And then my audience about, you know, I've estimated about 5% of my audience whenever I release videos on how to do affiliate marketing, they actually sign up and they actually do it. And then the average affiliate sends about 88 clicks. You know, I've done all the math, (laughs) right? I like this stuff. And then, you know, so we have 16,000 affiliates like last month in June. So, and each affiliate sent on average 88 clicks. And then, and then uh, from that, you know, we have like 1.5 million in in traffic. And uh, then the conversion rates are like, pretty low but basically Mm -hmm. it all evens out to uh you know hundreds i I forget but you know hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of sales of my training program so youtube is generating me affiliates which are generating me trap which are Mm -hmm. using like the ways i teach them how to do marketing get traffic and then i get customers so i'm not whereas most people on youtube what they're doing is they're teaching people you know, something they're like, let me teach you about like closing sales over the telephone. And then they'll be like, okay, that's your 10 minutes. Like if you want to learn more, pay me a thousand bucks. Um, you know, and, uh, most people are like 10 minute blurbs of how they're smart and like then buy my program. Whereas I'm going about it a little more roundabout way. Yeah. So YouTube's kind of like a real efficient system for rounding up and training affiliates to be better at promoting your stuff. Yeah. exactly that's pretty damn exactly. genius and you've grown it and, we, and we've paid out and we've paid out over five million dollars at this point to uh two affiliates of ours so you know what's cool is that my audience gets to share in that money too and uh you know i'll get like you know i get so much hate on youtube but i also get like <laughs> really bright points um you gotta have thick skin i mean the things everybody gets hate on youtube come on (laughs) it's youtube yeah i have like i have like dudes that are like devoted to like making (laughs) videos just about like how much of a scumbag they think i am like call them out uh, call them out right now (laughs) (laughs) like literal channels but 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 then you get like a guy in kenya who likes you know like some 16 year old kid or in kenya who's like dude I just made five hundred dollars wow. from your advice. Like, I've never made any money online. This is the amount of money somebody in my country makes in a year. Mm. You've changed my life for the better, forever. I can't explain to you how much this is means to me. And it's just like, <gasps> whoa! Like, <laughs> I just and I look up like what is the average salary in Kenya, and I'm like, oh my god! Like. You know, they make $500 a year. Like, yeah. like, man, it's just, you know, like this guy's life, you know, and he's 16, you know, it, of, I could just totally see it, you know? And, uh, so that stuff really, you know, that stuff keeps me going. That's part um, of that impact side. Impact. Yeah. 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 Well, so when it, when it comes to, um, like actually doing affiliate market, let's say, uh, like diet pills and, and, and that kind of stuff, what, what sort of traffic sources would you use to, to drive into that? Sure. So, uh, my two biggest traffic sources were Facebook Mm -hmm. and Outbrain, like native Mm -hmm. ads. Mm -hmm. Um, and both of those sources, I got up to about $40,000, um, uh, daily revenue, 
um, you know, at, at like certain points, right? Mm-hmm. It's like ups Averages, and downs. Yeah. Um, but I'd say, yeah, I, I was fa- I was heavy on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook and native ads were, I'd say, where I really exploded mm-hmm. uh, on those. Yeah. Are you still running those those kind of things? Because it, it almost sounds like you're talking in past tense. Is, is that stuff you're not doing anymore or you still are? So I'm, I'm mainly focused on my training course and my training course we made, you know, we've been doing YouTube ads just mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. people it, it's YouTube is much more like uh closer to like the education niche. Right. Um, and you know, people go to YouTube to learn and then, you know, they get my ad, which is like, Hey, you know, you want to learn about affiliate marketing? Um, you know, like watch my webinar, you know? Yeah. So um youtube is like really good for education and uh then i'm i'm doing tv ads obviously uh just start just started that like okay. you know this year so um uh but i i think each you know different products sell better different places mm-hmm. um facebook you know some of these traffic stores you can sell anything but yeah yeah you just got to experiment yeah, well, the thing with what Outbrain, you have to be super broad, right? Because you're just yeah. it can't be like a YouTube or a Facebook ad where you're oh, super yeah. dialed in on targeting. That's the thing to know yeah. for people listening. Yeah, we've tested like Outbrain and Taboola and stuff like that to internet marketing related offers and stuff like that, and it always just bombs. But we've never tried like health offers, which I right. think has more of a mass appeal, which would probably make more sense on a place like Outbrain for sure. Well, on YouTube side of things, I know like uh, one of the you've grown a crazy amount of subscribers on there. What would your strategy be to because I know you do ads a lot on there. Is it primarily yeah. paid traffic or are you doing kind of organic stuff too? How do you grow that kind of following? Uh so yeah, growing the following. So it started it started with it's cra- it's actually really crazy. So um two thousand this brings this goes way back. I started <laughs> my channel in two thousand nine and um i was i was in college i'd taken a semester off gone to thailand of course and um i brought along this book uh i brought along these spiritual books and also this business you know a couple business books and um or i think the one business book was called the four hour work week Hmm. and i read it in thailand and like the dude it starts off and the guy's like sitting on a beach in thailand i'm yeah. like oh my god like, <laughs> yeah. i'm sitting on a beach and i'm like this is crazy like it's a sign and i read the book but i was super enamored i said wow it makes a lot more sense to be an entrepreneur than to like be paid an hourly wage or like a monthly salary and i you know like that made a lot of sense to me is that being what if you're doing something where you're being paid for your time you've you're you're always going to have a glass ceiling and um that just resonated with me so right after i read the book i said i'm going to figure out like i'm going to go in a scalable business and i thought to myself what could i do and i said okay i'm going to teach people about like backpacking hmm. um because i love backpacking like that was my thing um just just like low budget yeah. hostels you know like hostel sex <laughs> like you know all, <laughs> that, that. all the fun but, you stuff. know all that stuff and i started teaching people about that i started i just used my camera phone and i started a youtube channel um never took off i only did like five videos before i was like oh like you know i only got 30 views you know you know (laughs) i'm i'm just gonna shut this down you know and um but what happened is over time i kept using youtube i uh as i was building my ad agency you know i got I got asked to do some videos for another marketing agency in LA. Um, they said, Hey, we're looking for somebody that's been on camera. Like, Oh, John, don't you have a YouTube channel? You know, or you said something about YouTube. And I was like, Oh yeah, like I'll do a video. I'll teach people about people. And then I started putting up some videos of my own. Um, when I started my own agency, I trained my employees by putting up YouTube videos, like of what I did so that they could see, but I accidentally made some of those on, you know, public. And when I, when I started my, when I got out of what I'd say, like strict affiliate marketing, and I started building my own personal brand in 2017, um, I checked in on my YouTube channel and it had like 10,000 subscribers <laughs> You're like, from uh... these old PPC videos I put up in like 2011 or something. And I was like, oh, wow, like, this is crazy. I had no idea. and that just kind of started um 
you know, that, that, that started this whole journey. I did YouTube ads and, you know, that brought me some subscribers just because people saw my face everywhere. And then I started like actually, you know, in 2019, um, in January 1st, 2019, I actually made my new year's resolution was I'm actually going to try to focus on YouTube a little bit more and I'm going to put up a video a day because that's what Casey Neistat said. Yep. He said, upload up, just keep, just keep uploading. Those were the three things he said, just keep uploading. So I said, I'm going to do a video a day. And, uh, I'd say it just kind of started through a process of trial and error. It started taking off. Well, that's, yeah. that's actually a good thing. It's yeah. Keep uploading because you never know what's going to hit. What's going to resonate. Yeah. I mean, there's keywords There's uh, if you have ads, then you're just like, kind of just all right, tossing them to the channel and see what resonates. Yeah. And you can always batch record too, right? Like you could record like seven videos in one day and then just trickle them out throughout the week. For sure. I do. I, yeah, I used to do for the first like year, I did 20 videos a day. And then I'd schedule those out over the month. Um, what I do now is I do like, I'll take like an afternoon each week and I'll shoot five videos. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's same idea. the process. Yeah. yeah. Sick. Oh man. So on, on YouTube, if I'm just trying to think, so that's, that's kind of the education hub that's generating the affiliates. I could see that being like a crucial piece of the system that just, you want to keep feeding that system because it's just feeding you new people, new customers, new affiliates. It's yeah. Well, it generates the sales to the course and the course, once they're in the right. course that, you know, they need click funnels, they need hosting, they need an autoresponder, all those things you're an affiliate of. So that's all the back end beyond the course. So, yep. right. Let's well, talk about, do you have ahead. more on YouTube? No, I'm good. There. I want to talk about the TV stuff. Cause that was something that before <laughs> we hit record, we were just like, like, I don't know anybody who's running TV ads, like yeah, yeah, just yeah. period. Like where does somebody even go if they wanted to run ads on TV? Sure. So you, you would, uh, you'd have to talk to a DRTV direct response TV media mm -hmm. buying agency. There are three, um, and ba you know, they're, they're Habas edge, um, Canela, uh and that's who i work with mm -hmm. and then there's river direct mm -hmm. and um you basically you you basically call up one of these companies and tv at tv cpms are actually lower than facebook Whoa. so it's way cheaper to buy tv ads than facebook so i'll buy like i'll be on nbc you know at like midnight in idaho mm -hmm. 75 bucks uh -huh. you know yeah yeah yeah, just 30 minute, 30 minute spot, you know, like you, you can get a lot of deals and a lot of eyeballs on TV for very, very cheap. But people just, you know, pe again, whenever there was like this quote where it's like when everybody when it's in the news, like don't buy, like yeah. when the company is in the news, like don't buy the stock or some, something like that. When everybody's talking about it, like run away right and um that quote always resonated home with me it's kind of like oh you missed the boat if, if it's like there's a gold rush in san francisco it's like oh you missed the boat if it's mm -hmm. on the front page the newspaper so you know that quote resonated with me and i always thought you know i saw all these people facebook ads facebook ads facebook ads facebook ads and i kind of thought to myself i was like this is the front page it's the front page headline of the news like for marketers it's like facebook ads yeah. so i was like i remember thinking to myself like okay maybe it's time to like think about something else and um i don't know like i have some friends uh who had done tv ads in the past as well so my mentor um who's you know also out in san diego kelly felix mm -hmm. he, we know kelly he yeah. did he did a number of tv ads and then i have my friends uh the morrisons anthony yep. and adrian um, they did TV ads. So it was kind of like something that I'd like heard about, but like nobody was talking about it. So I was like, okay, like there's a traffic source that works. Nobody's running on it. And, and like, I don't know for a while, like just, you know, that kind of sat in the back of my head and, um, I don't know, just a series of events led me to be like, okay, I'm going to try this out. Like I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try to yeah. get on TV and see if I can get an ROI. Uh, and part of it is also just, I always like to push to like broader and broader traffic sources. For mm -hmm. me, if I get an angle or an ad that works, I say, okay, how can I, you know, 
how can I expand to a greater audience? Like if I'm selling weight loss, I'm like, okay, it works on this small audience, but like, there's a lot of people who want to lose weight or like, you know, for you guys, you know, you guys are maybe, you know, you guys are talking about a lot of specific stuff, but you're also like motivating people and helping mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. maybe learn how to start a business. And it's like, there's a lot of people who want to be motivated. So I always look for like, what's the bigger picture thing here? And how can I tap into it? And that's always been kind of like a challenge for me in marketing is how do I get outside the audience? And mm. so I thought, okay, TV's like a challenge and I yeah. love marketing. So like, I'll, I'll try this out. <laughs> like I know, I know it works that there's no competition. Yeah. Um, why can't I make it work? You know? Now, are you yeah. using like, like uh, specific unique URLs? So you know, like this person came from that ad or are they all kind of driving to a, like a generic URL? Good question. So, so we have a phone number and a web page associated with each ad. Now the web page, it stays consistent, workathomesecrets.com. Mm -hmm. um, so we can't track the individual station there. I mean, we could try to back end into it based on like, you know, like, okay, the this, and, the, you know, yeah. timing and location, geography. Uh, but the real way we track is through the phone number. So half of, about half of the sales come in through the phone, through people calling into our IVR system. So I'm able to say, okay, we got, you know, 20 orders on, you know, on, a, on Fox FX, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we aired on FX at 4 a.m., you know, 20 orders on FX. And then I know if we got 20 orders on FX, I know we'll probably expect about 20 orders on the web. So I, I just have my own Excel spreadsheets where I, I have like makeshift calculations hmm. of attributing all of the web sales mm. to the particular stations. Gotcha. Mm. Now, yeah. this, this might be kind of a newbie question, but what's an, what's an IVR system? I'm not sure. I'm familiar IVR with that <laughs> is one of those like phones. It, it's like when you call AT&T and you're like, you know, they're like, press one for like, you know, if you, customer uh, okay. service, press two for sales, gotcha. press okay. three for technical support. So, and I, you know, so for, for marketing products, you know, an IVR system would be like, hey, it's John Cristani. Thanks for calling. You know, I'm really excited for you calling in about, you know, your interest about, you know, working at home. You know, it's times gotcha. are tough, mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm going to connect you with, uh, you know, with an agent. Uh, you know, with an automated agent that'll take your order and, you know, then it'll be mm. like, okay, you know, so, nice. so then they, you know, so you they enter their credit card. Yeah. You greet them and then, and then it kind of sends them down the path. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like, okay, please enter in your credit card information, you know, press one. If this is a visa, press two. If it, so it, it, yeah, that's, wow. that's an IVR. Gotcha. So it never actually ends up at like a call center or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's cool. Uh, what, so the model here, so. I guess there's two models, uh, your model, and then there's the TV model because you're taking, what is it like remnant space? Is that just where yeah. other ads yeah, are? Yeah, late placed? night, like midnight yeah. to eight, you know, 7 a.m. Yeah. Right. And then your model. So uh, what's your approach there? I think you mentioned you're selling a book, right? As yeah. uh, part of that ad there. And then that's just a beginning of your funnel. Yeah. So my infomercial is basically me in like a fancy house and there's like Lamborghinis and a helicopter and all this, you know, and like uh -huh. the, the, and, and, uh, this, this TV host comes over, um, and she interviewed and she's, she's good looking. Uh -huh. Um, Helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, she comes in and she says, Hey, you know, I, we're, we're, you know, today I'm going to be interviewing, you know, internet millionaire, John Cristani about, you know, his new book, Work at Home Secrets. And she, she says, John, how'd you come up with the title? You know, and she interviews me about, about my book. And she says, why'd you call it Work at Home Secrets? Like, how'd you get your start? Like, mm. how easy is it for people? You know, does this require technical skills? Like, you know, what are the benefits of working at home? You know, and, and so she just asked me all these questions. And I talk about the book and, you know, that, you know, stuff like that. So and, uh, you know, we hope to make sales. That's that, I mean, I'm just thinking like the timing with everyone at home out of work or trying to create something new, like you're probably crushing it right now. On, <laughs> on, like something is because this is the yeah. thing. It's like it, it seems like trends and, you know, marketing or business. It's like, no, we're at like the beginning. Like this is like the restart stage for a lot of folks or yeah. build the foundation. We, yeah. And we, we you know, what's funny is I, I got real I got real lucky on this one because I started uh, I started putting together uh we we just started like really just like hand over fist like 
you know, blowing up, I'd say about a month ago, Mm -hmm. but, uh, or, you know, actually like, uh, sorry, like two weeks ago, because, because we, there's, it's been a long process of shipping fulfillment. Like I've had to test a ton of different infomercials. Mm. Um, but, uh, the concept for it came together in August of last year. So I got real lucky with the timing. Yeah, you did. Um, <laughs> so that's a horrible way to say it. But. I mean, Hey, you did though. In terms of the demand you did. Yeah. If we yeah, like exactly. So, so yeah, I mean, the timing helps out a ton. I mean, and yes, it is, it is working very well, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not something I, I didn't like coronavirus. Didn't, it, it wasn't that coronavirus happened. And then I was like, Oh, I'm going to make a work at home right. uh, infomercial. Yeah, yeah. It just, I had already been working on that. The title of my book was already work at home secrets. So all, you know, I it's, it's taken me over a year to figure out how, you know, to get this campaign profitable. Um, yeah, it's taken me over a year for this one. So it's been a really wow. long time in the making, but uh, and it's been really difficult and a lot of money wasted and a lot of emotions, um, you know, but it's but it's been a lot of fun because it's a challenge. And I, I love I love uh, testing myself because I love marketing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I really think what it is, is it's right now in the current environment, there's so many people that are kind of opening their eyes to things that people like us have known for years now, right? They're opening their eyes to like, oh man, there's a different way. I don't have to go into an office to actually get work done. There are Mm -hmm. ways to make money online. There are alternatives to like the traditional lifestyle and people are starting to realize this because of the situation they've been forced into. And it's not like any of us went, ooh, we're gonna capitalize on this. No, it's the shit we've been doing for the last, well, for us, the last 13 years, you know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Now I'm curious with the TV ads, is there some sort of thinking or philosophy behind like what networks you put them on? Like, I know that the timing of it may be a little up in the air due to the remnant nature, like the remnant ad space, but like, how do you decide what networks to actually put them on so that they'll perform? We're still testing. Um, but basically, you know, we do, we do real well on like, like travel channel, for instance. Right. Mm. Um, I'll give you guys one. Uh, just in case anybody's listening and like, it's like, I want to get in, you know, yeah, oh, yeah, CPMs yeah. are cheaper there. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I'd say, so a few factors, uh, go into it such as like, uh, CMT and BET perform horribly, huh. right? Uh, you know, just the customer quality, they won't go on to any of the things I affiliate market for. They want, you know, the, they might get the book. But, you know, like country music television, like, you know, and then like BET, it's just you get a lot of really poor people Mm -hmm. on those stations. So you have to consider your market, Um, you know, because we're looking, you know, we have like higher priced like affiliate programs that I'm trying to get people into. And, you know, if if we're talking to broke people, you know, Mm -hmm. then then I don't I don't get any of the affiliate commissions. So I have to measure that stuff out. So I want to be where there's some money. Um, and then the other thing is like, you look at what le- what programs lead in to, uh, to your infomercial, because again, it's kind of like this, you know, people don't like tune in for an infomercial. It's like right. they're coming from something else. Right. And uh, generally like if they're coming from, you know, if somebody's coming from like five minute, like short animated, you know, cartoons, like they're probably not going to have the attention span for a 30 minute long, like sales pitch, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas if the lead in is, is like a two hour rerun of John Wayne films, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, on, you know, FX, well, somebody's, you know, they, they have attention span. They've been watching a two hour long thing. You know, they've been watching this <laughs> probably all night. You know, the, mm-hmm. so they, you know, they've been watching Ronald Reagan films or, you know, cowboy <laughs> films all night. So, so a 30 minute, you know, little infomercial is not going to be a, you know, they're not going to lose focus. They'll be, you know, they'll, they, they have the focus there. So, so those are like some of the considerations, uh, that factor in, um, there's a lot, there's a lot though, man. I mean, it's, 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 uh, but I, I, I'd say that's, generally the good thing like looking at the lead yeah. in what are people coming from 
is yeah. a really good barometer. Yeah, it's like any other ad platform, right? You got to test and what works for one market's not going to work for a different well, market. Like YouTube yeah. ads, I would assume it's very similar too. they're searching out something specific, but it's like you don't want to totally throw up something that's just not relevant or yeah, it's just like yeah. always think of the lead in. I think that's a super good lesson. And, and that's why we advertise on YouTube. We advertise on a lot of other gurus channels. So if yeah. they're look, if so, or or motivational channels work great for us. So you know, it's obvious if people are watching like a video about Tony Robbins, and he's like, you know what, like sh- you can live your dreams, like map out your dreams, like let's dream map exercise. And then it's like you get an ad from John Cristani, and it's like, hey, would you like to be making ten thousand a month with like very little effort? It's like. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> Tony's like, way wow, too much work for me right now. Like, <laughs> I manifested him. Yeah. You know? like, I manifested him. Um, so, you know, the conversion rates are going to be really high. Uh, so, but, you know, motivation works very well because there's a lot of these motivational channels, which are like, you know, just be like two hours of motivational, like workout music. And it's mm. like, you know, like, you know, you can do anything you dream of. You can be anything you want. And then it's like, hey, would you like a lot of money? You know, it's like my ad. And, and, and you know, that works well. So, yeah, it yes, feels, elite is super important. Yeah, it feels it's, congruent. Yeah, and, and sort of serendipitous. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, I had to give you some background sound there for the motivational. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this has been interesting. And uh, yeah, it seems like video is really like the crux of like the core of what you do to show yeah the lifestyle, the business model, catch people where they're at. And, um, and it seems like I haven't seen the commercial or anything, but you have a, you know, a, a, a fun demeanor. You make it exciting. It's not like yeah. here's a boring crotchety old business model. It's like, no, <laughs> yeah. from my home, I'm having a bitch in life. I'm you yeah. know, flying yeah. helicopters and kite surf, whatever, you know, and, but you can do it too, you know? And, uh, yeah. I think that's right now. A lot of folks are just reaching for the reset button and like a foundational income. And I think you're doing a good thing there, man. So I, yeah, it's it, it's it's cool and it's fun and it and frankly it you know it 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 helps people and this is just a natural this is just where the world's going anyways you yeah. know it's like you know it yeah so it's it's fun jump on it well uh, let's let's wrap it up and tell us about the the work at home offer that you have there just uh, give us a little like thirty second spiel about it and. Oh, my, uh, oh, my, book my, my book. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the book. My, my book is just like, kind of like a basic intro to affiliate marketing. It's kind of like, you know, here's it, We go over, it's called work at home. Like the full title is work at home scams and secrets or secrets and scams. So, you know, I talk a little bit about like, because a lot of people get scammed and I talk mm-hmm. about that, you know, when they're just, when somebody just first Googles, like how to make money online, like, you know, the really broad market offers are generally like a little sketchy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I talk a little bit about that. I'm like, here's what to avoid. And then I'm like, here's the ways to make money online. You know, I'm like, you know, I talk about the drop shipping and the Amazon and the consulting and like task and mm. freelancing and all this stuff. And then I'm like, and here's what I believe is the best way to make money online. And it's, uh, you know, and then I go into affiliate marketing and I just, I give the basics of kind of a few ways to do it, like Google, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. And yeah, I mean, it's just, it's very, it's very basic, but for a lot of people, like basic is completely revolutionary. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so for anybody listening to this episode, where, where do you think the best place to go for them? If let's say they're a little beyond basic, where, where would you like people to go check out more of your stuff? Uh, check me out on YouTube, you know, Google my name or YouTube, my name, John Cristani. Uh, and you'll find just a ton of videos, you know, again, on YouTube stuff's fair, you know, I, I do weekly, you know, mm-hmm. ask me anything sessions every Monday. I'll do that later this afternoon. Um, sweet. Yeah. I'd say go, I, I'd say go to YouTube and check me out there. Sweet. Awesome. I'll link it up in the show notes, man. Yeah, uh, it's been fun, man. Hey, what's a, I guess, uh, what's a book that you, you find yourself going to, you know, you mentioned four hour work week, but what's one I know that you, you like, like the alchemist. I know you like the alchemist. Um, That's a good one. Uh, you know what? I'll here. Let I'm, I'm gonna grab a grab the book. Can you yeah, give me a second? Go for it, man. Yeah. Put some waiting music on. So Matt's been uh, producing music lately. So we gotta like, there's like some filler music we could fill in here, Matt. Right? Okay. 
Maybe not. We're just probably won't. <laughs> no, we won't. We're too lazy for that. And Jacob, our editor, you don't need to do that. Well, eventually we're going to remake our Hustled flowchart intro with Ooh. a little more polished sound to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shh. Oh. I wasn't supposed oh, to get out. Sorry, I'm I'm, gra- I'm I'm finding I'm finding some uh I'm grabbing like a couple books. All right, perfect. Uh, <laughs> we're we're just uh, filling time here with bullshit. <laughs> boom, boom. Okay. We don't what edit is, at all. We're too lazy for what that. What does Joe so. Rogan do when people go to the bathroom? I guess him, him and Jamie just talk, right? Yeah, that or sometimes he'll even go to the bathroom. So yeah, that's true. And just leave that air. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, no, no, no. I think I think no, the host is, 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 okay like is it okay if I go if if I talk about a couple books here? Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> okay. You have a big as one, he walks okay. back with a stack as big as his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Okay, so if people, I, I love reading. Yeah. So, um, if people want like one book, which I would recommend, this book, Rainbow's End, because you guys are in San Diego, and Werner Vinge is based in San Diego. Yeah. The setting is uc is one of those uh schools in tory pines like ucsd or uh, something ucsd yeah uh-huh. um he taught it's a it's a sci-fi book and it talks about all these future i mean like we don't have to come up with the the what is the next big thing because like authors have already figured it out sci-fi. and yeah. uh he talks about affiliate marketing what the I believe affiliate marketing is the mo- business model that takes over all e-commerce. Mm. And he kind of envisions that in this book. He talks about like just in time training and like all these other like crowd uh not Whoa. crowdsourcing, it's like l- yeah, like crowdsourcing type like just in time crowdsourcing type stuff. It's really really revolutionary the concepts he thinks of in this book and I think it can it help inspire a future future you know entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs to create the future i think it's really Ooh, cool that's right up our alley. Um, yeah uh, another another really to go on a business book i'd say zero to one mm, okay mm-hmm. that's a good zero peter to Thiel. one by peter Thiel. another big picture you know talking about the difference between incremental change and actually like doing something completely new and that's my goal right that's mm-hmm. like why i said like asteroid mining you know, but yeah. but to do Astro of Mine, you have to have like a couple billion dollars before you can like <laughs> do big goals. Yeah. So Zero to One, I think, is a good book. I had a Paula Coelho book, Warrior of Light. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, then I'm just going to shout out my two favorite authors, which is one is Cormac McCarthy, uh-huh. uh, who did uh, No Country for Old Men. He wrote the book. He writes these kind of uh, he's just an amazing author that te- that goes into people's psychology it's not just like you know oh john met mary mary you know (laughs) they fell in love they went to the he goes into like just you know people with you know for instance like uh you know just like weird subcultures and like you know just all he, he goes really deep into people's lives in a way that i think really benefits marketers mm. because to be a marketer you have to understand people yeah. at a very real level not you know i hate all these charts of like demographics and like all this like interest it's like talk to people you want to understand people you want to market things to people you want to sell stuff to people talk to the people understand them understand their days understand their stuff and he goes so deep in 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 a very human level um i like blood meridian it's freaking it's just it's uh there's a lot of death like there's Hmm. scott they they're scalping Indians like and he goes mm-hmm. into like why people were scalping Indians like you know it's like the story of this Texas boy at like 15 when it like and at the years 1820 and you know we pass and also like just all the judgment we pass on different groups of mm. people like just learning to understand I'm not saying like go scalp Indians but <laughs> the way he writes about it is it's very interesting and like thought provoking. And then my favorite author by far is this guy called Neil Stevenson. Mm. And I'm reading this absolute killer of a book called Reem. Reem D. It's kind of like read me, but ah. Reem D. It's just the D and the M are mixed around. And it's just so filled with action. I mean, it's a thousand. I'm, I'm, I'm 600 pages in, but it's got like, russian mafia you've got like chinese computer hackers you've got like american 
you know, billionaire game developers. You've got like, it's just such a, uh, you've got Islamic terrorists and like, then you've got like British MI6 <laughs> agents and it's just this insane mixture of craziness. So is that going to tell us what's going to happen in the world, basically? <laughs> <laughs> those are, yeah, those are the main things. Chinese hackers, yeah. Russian mafia, like US MI6. Billionaires, yeah. it, and, it's, and it's so fun, but they really get down to like such, he does so much research into his characters. Like I've learned so much about Sambo, which is the mm. uh, Russian martial art that's based off of jujitsu. It's like it's basically like jujitsu with gunplay. Oh wow! Um, gunplay. I've never yeah. even heard gunplay. Yeah, it's it's like jujitsu is like nice on like yeah. TV, but like this is like real world stuff. And they go into the psychology of how it all works. And like the Russians, they have they have these like pistol holders that like instead of like bringing it, they laugh at cowboys like the characters do <laughs> yeah. because they say cowboys pull their gun out and then they shoot it. And like the Russians, they just they push their gun through their holster uh, and it's like way fat. I don't know. It's I've learned yeah, yeah. so much about specific groups of people um, that I, and I think that's marketing. I think mm -hmm. marketing is getting to know people on a personal level. And those, you know, that's why yeah. I like this author because it goes into people at a personal level. And I encourage people to read all over the place. If, uh, if you want to be successful, it's been, um, and listen to interviews. You know, those are my yeah. two things. And yeah. I'm I'm such a fan of both of those. Ooh, cool. Couldn't Dude. agree more. Now, are th were those <laughs> fiction books, those last couple that you mentioned, or are they nonfiction? Those last couple I mentioned were fiction books. Yeah. Very cool. This, these are like but, the best recommendations ever, I think. Like the, the widest. Obviously, you started with Four Hour Work Week that most people have read or heard about, at least. But then you have all these like totally out there sci fi fiction. But again, I love it. yeah, I got to dig in as more fiction, man, because you're right. It's like an education, but through this kind of world that's you know it's it's probably happening you know there's evidence of it all over the place but a lot of it becomes reality eventually well yeah and I, I don't know about you guys but i get kind of sick of reading business books course, like there yeah. you oh, can only yeah. say the same shit so many times yeah. <laughs> in learn, so many different ways learn from the old guys you know the, <laughs> yeah. the relics out there that created this stuff but. exactly all right john well I think this has been a great time, man. So, <laughs> thanks a lot. And, Sorry, uh, I tired you guys out. But no, no, it's a lot to think about, but that's a good thing. That's why no, we do you, this. You fired us up. And, and once all this COVID shit sort of calms down a little bit, we should meet up for a beer or something yeah. sometime. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I go down. To, I was down in San Diego like a couple weeks ago surfing nice. with my buddy. So I was in Carlsbad. Yeah, I'd uh -huh. love I'd love to hang out. I'll let you guys know next time I'm coming down there. And Sweet. you guys likewise, let me know if you're ever headed up here and we'll go out and get a burger some craft beers stuff yeah, like that brother. sounds great man sweet thanks so much for tuning into that episode i hope you dug it i know joe and i dug it i actually kicked joe out of the room he's not here right now because i wanted to tell you about a tool that i really really dig we use it in our business we recommend it all the time it's called Easy Webinar, and it's a tool that lets you do live webinars automated webinars hybrid webinars and uh you know pretty much any other kind of webinar if there are other kinds of webinars. But anyway, this tool is kind of like your all in one do it all tool for anything webinar related. It's easy webinar. It's put out by a dude named Casey Zeman. He's been on the podcast. If you haven't listened to that episode, it's a killer episode. He's a really smart dude, but his software is amazing. It does everything. It's, you know, the title tells you exactly what it does. It's an easy webinar platform. And we use this in our business to run automated webinars all the time. We don't do a lot of live webinars these days. We like to do the kind of automated webinars where somebody can register and then it, you know, they can either watch it like 15 minutes later or they can watch it the next day, but it's just kind of always running. And it's a system that helps us make autopilot sales off of our webinars. Super cool tool. If you haven't tried it yet, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing tool. And, uh, Casey is actually hooking you up. He said for listeners of Hustle and Flow Chart, I can't believe he's doing this, but he said for, for listeners of the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast, he's giving 25% off of the membership to use Easy Webinar. It's already super, super inexpensive for what it does and all the cool features it has, but he's hooking you up with 25% off because you're a listener of Hustle and Flow Chart. Go to easywebinar.com slash hustle. That's where you can get that 25% off discount. That's easywebinar.com slash hustle. It's an awesome tool. You're going to dig it. So just go grab it. Check it out. Easywebinar.com slash hustle. 
see ya. No, not see ya. You'll hear me in the next show. I don't know. I don't know how to close these things. Go get easy webinar. Talk to you later. Thanks everybody for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. For taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out, all the good stuff from this episode. We actually have a nice, simple notes version that you can find on our website. So go to evergreenprofits.com, find this episode that you just listened to, and uh, give us your email address, and we'll send you the notes. Thanks for listening. Go get it. Wiki, wiki.